everyone, this is Kyle with Level 10 Interactive, and today we're doing a quick video over, uh, <laughs> let's see, automatic theme generation, or automated theme generation. Um, so in our uh, platform that, we're, that we have called Open Enterprise, um, we have been talking a lot lately about color theory and color palettes and uh, things of that nature um, in terms of our theming process. So uh, when we're using our our platform, um, sometimes you might notice that whenever you're working for clients or you're building out themes for clients, uh, you, I mean, you do have to build a custom theme for each one. Um, so what we wanted to do is that we wanted to create a couple of standard themes that we can use across the board for different verticals and then just color them differently on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, now, of course, there are other modules, like there's a core color module and a couple of other things, um, but those are pretty static in terms that those are just swapping out different CSS files. Um, but what we want to do is that we want to take the same theme and just color it differently. So in all of our projects, we use Bootstrap as our base theme. Um, Bootstrap, it's an incredible framework. If you've never used it, definitely check it out. Um, and a huge shout out to our... Uh, to Mark Carver, who's the maintainer of Bootstrap. He's done a lot of great work with it. He's a former uh, senior front-end developer for us and a, and a big mentor of mine. So um, definitely uh, check out the, some of the work he's doing. Um, so we use Bootstrap as a base theme for all of our theming uh, initiatives, um, but we also need to build some things on top of that. So for example, um, we have our own base theme called Enterprise Bootstrap. So what we do is that we use Bootstrap as the base, and then we have additional settings that we put on top of Bootstrap inside of Enterprise Bootstrap. So these these are things like if we want to change how big the sidebar column is, um, if we want block striping so you have uh, alternating stripes on the home page when you're using different uh, sections, um, if we want we're, if we want to place the title in a different area or you know things like that if we want to you know dynamically change which which bootstrap plugins are being turned on instead of having to uh, comment and uncomment um in an info file so things like that we even have a built-in mega menu thing which we'll talk about later um but you know in addition to that um we want to make sure that our we actually have themes underneath this one so this is actually in the middle and we'll have a theme below called like Bella or health or something like that. Um, so in this case, we're going to be talking about our health vertical. So talking about theme automation, what we want to do is that you want to um, color your themes in, this, in a certain way to where you're, you can add color palettes to this theme and it makes it look really great. So what we do is that we combine um, some less comp, some, some really clever less compilation with the bootstrap uh, theme. Um, and then we also throw in some color palettes on top of that. So uh, what you can see here is that we have a color palette down below. And so these are the variables that we inject into our theme and we use them in different cases. So um, this is something we, we just built and we're releasing with the uh, latest version Open Enterprise and it's going to be really, really cool. So for example, um, the primary color of our theme, you can see it's like this blue. And we can actually use a color picker and change out whatever color we want. Um, and then, you know, so on and so forth. Now, to be uh, clear is that you have to make sure that you're using these colors appropriately throughout your theming process. So it does take some theory and we are, we're actually start working on um, rebuilding some of our themes or making these new themes with this in mind. So for example, um, I'm going to go ahead and reset this. You can see that in our theme, uh, we have our secondary color being used. Our primary color being used for the header and buttons, um, and these are kind of stick together right here. Uh, and so this is kind of how the colors are currently being used. But um, if you want to change it, you can do that as well. So when talking about adding color palettes, we want to give away to where clients or other uh, you know agencies who are using Open Enterprise can be coloring themes uh, in a more sensible and easy way and easy manner. Um, so, for example, we use a, we had recently or built a module about a year ago called Color Lovers. So, Color Lovers is a is a community online where people can share color palettes, create new colors, and um, things like that. So, if you look at my profile, you can see that I have nine palettes, um, you know, Citrus Grove or Coffee Club or Honey Pot or Sea Wolf or any of these things um, that I have in my profile. So, the module is actually written by our old developer Ian Whitcomb, and uh, it's just a wrapper. Anyone can use it. It's on Drupal.org. Um, but we integrated this into our theming process. So you can actually look in our theme that we have our color our color lover palettes. So 
the options are that we built in are, you know, you can pick the top color palettes, the newest random palettes from Color Lovers. Uh, random, it'll give you a single random one every time you hit save. Or you can put in your username and pull in the color palettes from your profile. Or you can even put in keywords. So I can put in, you know, pumpkin cookie and anything that's related to pumpkin cookie, it'll bring back those. So uh, actually, let's just try something like that. So since it's, you know, first day of fall was yesterday, let's put in pumpkin. So I'm going to hit save. And then we can come down here, look at color lovers. And here's all the color palettes that are related to pumpkin. Um, so what I can do is that with any one of these, I can just click. And every time we click, it'll update the color palette below. So actually, let's go with shades of a pumpkin that's interesting actually let's do happy halloween so we'll hit save halloween's coming up so we save those colors then now we have our new color palette and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and refresh the theme oops and on refresh what this is doing this is actually injecting those variables into the less um, compiler and now recompiling the theme um, so now actually we have this orange and this purple and this yellow on um, those provided in that color palette. So it's a really neat way to, you know, automatically start generating some new color palettes or generating a new uh, form of your theme. Um, so color leverage is, is one way to do it. It's a great way if you want to maintain your own color palettes or maybe if you're a designer and you have, uh, you know, you want to just have like maybe a set of five or six really good color palettes you can always look back to. Um, that's one way to do it. But say you're a company, maybe even a new company, you're not sure what your color palette should be, or maybe you're just kind of looking for some inspiration. So um, I actually recently wrote a module wrapper for the service Pictaculous. So Pictaculous is made by MailChimp. Um, what you can do is you can upload a logo, and then, so we're just gonna pick any one of these. You can upload a, lo up, uh, upload a logo and it'll pull back the color palette based on the logo you uploaded and then uh, there's Adobe Cooler and Color Lovers it'll suggest palettes from those two services now it's not always the best suggestions um, but you know it's something and it's kind of fun to play with so um, that's an option as well so what we did is that we integrated that into this process as well so what I can do is I can actually upload a logo let's save and it's uploading it to the service right now, and then it'll send back the color palette based on the picture I uploaded, which you can see I uploaded this shirt, and now we have this blue and silver color palette. Um, these are Dallas Cowboys colors, by the way. So, and then it'll also give us suggestions for other color palettes based on Adobe Cooler and Color Lovers. We integrated this into, into um, this as well. So, if we look at Pictaculous palettes, we can actually open this up. Uh, same concept, we do have um, the color palettes that are being pulled in from there. And we can actually click on these and update the colors as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the color palette that I updated, or that I uploaded. We're going to save that, go back and hit refresh. And now we have a new color palette uh, generated based on those colors. Um, that actually doesn't look too bad. So, you know. Uh, keep in mind that you do have to, this is all based on theming. So you, ha um, you know, if you are doing custom theme, you need to make sure that you're using colors appropriately throughout the theme and that you're using, uh, you know, good, a good, uh, you know, pattern for it. So, um, we've been talking a lot about color theory. So things like the 60, 30, 10 rule, um, you know, complementary colors and how you should be using them effectively, um, and things like that. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but this is now integrated into Open Enterprise, and so clients will now have a access to this in the future, um, and we'll have a uh, hopefully a bunch of new themes to be trying this out on. So, guess any questions? This is posted on YouTube, but this was part of a blog post. So feel free to uh, comment in the section below. Um, let us know what you think, or if you have any questions, and uh, we'll be happy to answer them. You can also get us on Twitter at Level Ten, um, or me personally at Kyle Tailored, and and uh, we'd be happy to you know talk for a little bit. So we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.